This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena, and folks... I have one of the stars of La Femme Nikita on the show today, as well as we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of Joy of Sex. Folks, I give you the wonderfully talented Eugene Robert Glazer. How do you do, do Eugene? Well, uh, after that wonderful intro, uh, I have to sit down. It was terrific. Thank you. <laughs> For the wonderfully talented. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I uh, think so. You see, I got so excited, I forgot the question. How am I doing? Is that what you said? That's right. That's a, I'm, I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, hanging out in L.A. and uh, having some nice rain, which is uh, a blessing, uh, because we never get rain here in California. Mm. Um, other than that, I have, uh, you know, still taken care of, as I had mentioned earlier, too. I had 18 animals at one time. I'm now down to... Uh, uh, three cats and three dogs. Okay. And, yeah, and I and I find it hard going to PetSmart when they have dog adoptions because I want more, and I I really have to not even go close because I love dogs. I love cats. I love animals. I love animals but, too. I've oh, got a cat. <laughs> oh yeah, they're, they're they're a blessing. I mean, mm-hmm. they really are a blessing. Um, if I ever meet someone, you know, any place, and I say, oh hi, and then we start talking, and they, and I find out that they really dislike animals that's the end of the conversation i i wouldn't be friendly with someone who who really doesn't like animals that's that's just the way i am yeah i hear you yeah my brother and his fiance had two uh had two ferrets they both since <laughs> passed away but boy were uh-huh. they, they anytime they needed to find something they just look under the bed <laughs> that's funny you know i thought about a parrot and i said oh god no i mean the, the damn thing will outlive me, for Christ's sake. No, I'm talking about ferret, not parrot, yeah. ferret. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, parrots will outlive you. <laughs> but, yeah, I, um, yeah, I got a cat. I do my routine with him every morning when I get home from work, so. <laughs> yep. 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 I didn't do that litter today, so they're really annoyed with me. Well, you know what? I I don't know what you have for a litter box, but I got one of those round ones that you can roll upside down. What? What it? Okay, what it is? It's it's a, it's a like a circle. When yeah. you buy it, there's a bottom part and there's a top part. There's a strainer, and there's a a little shovel thing. And the bottom part, you hook, you snap the strainer part in. You put the top part, you snap that on top, so there's enough room for the cat to get in, and the little shovel thing goes right into, um, right inserts right into the top part, and then when you gotta change the litter, all you have to do is roll it upside down, and nothing falls out, and then you roll it back, uh, all the clean litter goes into the strainer, and all of the uh, the increment uh, goes into the the scooper, and you just pull a scooper out, you <laughs> dump it out, and uh, you just uh, roll it back, and all the clean litter comes back out through, and it, it's no mess. It takes me about twenty seconds to do it. Are you serious? I'm yep. Sorry. Obviously, you don't have clumping litter. Uh there's clumping litter, but it come when you roll it upside down, it comes down on it goes into the scooper. And then when you put it upright again, you just take the scooper out of the top part. And you just dump it in the garbage. That's that's all there is to it. That sounds interesting. I'll look for that in the. Uh, I've never seen one in the in the pet store. Well, I got mine at Walmart. That's where oh, okay. I got mine. Yeah, just yeah. It's it's shaped round and it comes in four parts and it's easy to <laughs> assemble. God. Yep, and my cat took to it immediately. Well, I, I've changed from, which I believe I talk about litter. <laughs> I've changed from um, from from scooping litter. Uh, uh, I forgot to scoop away, and um, I used to try all kinds. And and you know the bag itself, it's a small bag. It weighs forty two pounds. You know, and I can. I'm an old guy. You know, I can still lift it with with difficulty. But I I I found. I was at a friend's house, and she had little 
uh, little pellets that were uh, pine and mm -hmm. paper and all that. And I thought, uh, let me try it. I fell in love. I'm telling you, I'm in love with this litter. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to clean. It's like one, two, three. It's wonderful. Now, when, when my, my wife was alive and we had all these animals, we had, are you ready for this? We yeah. had 11 litter boxes in the house. <laughs> <laughs> she had two in one place, two in another, two. She had them everywhere, and she cleaned them. She was like, you know, I, I, I know it sounds, but just to make a point, after she finished cleaning those litter boxes, you could eat in, off the litter box. That's how close she came in with equipment and scoopers and, and, and paper towels and, and, and alcohol sprays. And she was a maniac when it came because she was very chest compulsive. That helps. But, um, it, it, <laughs> it, it was great. Eleven litter boxes was a bit much. I used to have the, the pet store deliver the litter, and they would have to deliver the bags in a truck. That's how much stuff we would buy. But those days are gone. Um, ah, yeah, i got to have an animal, even if it's one dog or one cat. Well, I would... Um... I don't know. I'm trying to think of what the name of this was, but... But it was uh, it was round and it was came in four parts: a top part, a bottom part. You had a strainer that gets hooked, uh, snapped in to the bottom part, and the scooper is in the goes inserts into the top part. And well, it's okay. very easy to do. And I also use the scooper. Um, I pour the l fresh litter into it, and I just uh -huh. insert it into the hole and dump it onto the uh, uh, inside the litter box. I don't even have to. Uh, take the top part off to to do that well here, here, here's your job greg mm -hmm. you accept this job <laughs> <laughs> the impossible mission okay uh, when you have a chance not a big deal take some pictures of of the thing mm -hmm. uh, you know whatever that shows me the whole thing and and just email it to me i want to see what it looks like sure yeah yeah i'd like to see that okay i can do that that's no problem yeah, i got your yeah. email address like so we can do that excellent because right. it would take you about 20 seconds, if that. All right. All right. Well, uh, I'm looking forward. You don't do it. I know where to find you. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got this at Walmart, and I forget how much it costs. It wasn't that expensive, but it's like, man, that saves me a lot of time. Well, I'm going to do – I'm going to – I'd like to check it out, yeah, because I, I sometimes am so lazy I don't change their litter for like a day or two. And mm -hmm. they come out of that, that, that room, and they're like – looking at me <laughs> and you know cats are clean mm -hmm. i try and keep i try and keep them clean because if if it's too they'll, they'll poop someplace in the house you know yeah you know they'll give you the message yep well my my cat uses mine and uh it's it's uh, it's, it's great and he and he likes it he never uh i i hated using the other one because he would it would just be on the floor and he would kick yeah, it under yeah. the yeah this oh, yeah. right here there's Little to no mess. Yeah, I got when I go in and clean the, uh, like, uh, which I'll probably do sometime today. It's, <laughs> the litter is all over the floor. It's everywhere. I've got to yep. sweep up first and vacuum, and it's uh, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. Well, I'll take some pictures of this and I will okay, send to you. Me. Yeah, because I I think this would solve a lot of your problems. Well, good. good. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, nice. it's the most exciting thing in my life now. <laughs> well, there you go. Just think, we started off with there pet tips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right, so what else would you like to know? <laughs> well, I, I just before we start talking about your films and whatnot, I wanted to get a little bit of your background. I know you mentioned that uh, that you became a Canadian. And uh, well, talk talk about your background, how you got into well, the business. and. That never. Uh, uh, I became interested in acting when I lived uh, in New York uh, with this lady. Um, we had to, actually it was her apartment. I moved in with her. I lived in Brooklyn with my folks. Uh, she had an apartment on uh, West. No, sorry, East Seventy Sixth Street between Park and Lex Park Avenue and Lexington. Nice neighborhood. And and our windows looked out onto the street. And I, I remember getting, I can remember, I went, was going to acting school. I went to American Academy and, <clears throat> and then HP Studios, uh, Herbert Berghoff Studios. And I remember getting up one day, and it was summertime, and I worked on Wall Street. And, um, you know, I got dressed and was ready to 
take the subway and I looked out the window and the line to, to get go down into the subway was was about a quarter of the way up the block. Oh wow. I mean, and, and I looked at that and I thought, oh my God. And plus, in the summertime, the New York subways, are, it, it, it's very hot. And I looked at I looked at it and I just I started to get undressed. She said, "What are you, what are you doing?" I said, "I just quit my job." She said, "What what do you mean? <laughs> you just quit your job?" I said, "I said I'm going to do what I like. I'm going to become an actor." She said, "Yeah, but you got to make some money here. You have a nice job right now, which <laughs> which of course was a little premature to do." Um, <laughs> but I I started studying and um, you know I I had a little money from the work I had done. And then we decided to leave. We decided to leave New York and uh, come out to California. So I lived with her for seven more years, and then of course that that went south. And um, it was uh, well, actually, interesting enough. Uh, back in Brooklyn, okay, we'll shoot back a little. Uh, I got up one morning and uh, <coughs> and I saw this little newspaper uh, uh, ad that was cut out and placed on on the uh, the dining room table. And I looked at it, and it was an audition for a uh, dinner theater out on Long Island, um, and it was for a comedy. And uh, I'd never done anything before, so I, I went and I auditioned for it, and I got the part. Oh, wow. dinner theater. Okay. My dad left me the article, which I thought was so sweet. He saw it in the newspaper, he cut it out, he left it for me. Oh, so I can actually say my, my father actually <laughs> directed me to my first, my first audition. And um, so that was that job, and then we came to California, and I started doing theater. And the work didn't come easy because, you know, I, I thought I was not serious about it. I was, you know, eh, yeah, it, it can't be that hard, you know, to get into the business world. Yeah, little did I know, uh, it's ve it's very difficult. <laughs> you, you know, there, there are years where you got to study, you got to do plays, you do uh, workshops, you do uh, showcases. You, it's endless, and they're always taking new photos, and they're always looking for a new agent. And they're always, it it was it was not easy. And so I worked uh, I worked in restaurants. I was a, a captain in a very good restaurant. I was a waiter. I was a bartender. Um, I, I drove trucks. I got to make a living, and um, it it, um, it it was really uh, it, it took a lot of time, you know. And and then I I, I met my to be wife in an acting class or where else. And um, so, uh, and again, she asked me to move in with her and I left my little garret, <laughs> my one bedroom, tiny little place. Uh, and she had a lovely home and uh, the rest was history. You know, we were together 38 years. But um, yeah, the work was very, uh, I was getting more work in Canada because now, you know, of course I was a Canadian citizen mm -hmm. at, the, at the point after I, well, actually, it didn't happen immediately. I moved in with my wife in 1979. Mm -hmm. I became a landed immigrant in 1989. <laughs> so okay. it took a while, but for me to think about doing it. And the work started to come, and uh, I, I was getting work up in Canada. And I said to her, listen, I, I, I got to go to Toronto. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not making a living down here, and, you know, I'm, I'm getting work up there. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't very pleased because I left, <laughs> and uh, but you know she came up to join me, and um, I lived from the very beginning in um, in, a, in an apartment, sort of an, a, a, I guess you can call it a, not a hotel, but a, you rent an apartment and uh, the big building, and um, I had hardly any money, and I was very depressed, so I I bought. I went down to Young Street and I bought a, 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 head, a head, headset and I bought a, um, a a VCR player. In those days, of course, we had VCR. Yep. <laughs> and Blockbuster. Oh, and yeah. I was so depressed that I'd get up in the morning, I'd do a little exercise, have my breakfast, put the headset on, plug in, and watch a, a movie. And before I knew it, it was nighttime. I was, I was just getting lost in films. I watched in one month, I came back in... The blockbuster the guy said, "You know, you're our best customer." He said, "You know, you have rented 87 movies <laughs> in one month." <laughs> and I, you know, something I can't even tell you what movies they are anymore. It's all a blur. But that's that's what I did. So I I didn't have the money for the rent, so I used my credit card. 
Next oh. month's rent came. I used another credit card. So finally, it got to a point that my credit cards were full, and I'm saying, oh, shit, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. I got one job, a voiceover, which paid $200, which was like nothing. Um, and, uh, and, a, and a friend who had, he had a house down by the beaches said to me, listen, uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to Vancouver. I'm moving to Vancouver. Uh, you want to you want to rent my apartment? And I said, and I've seen his apartment is really nice. I said in, in the house he had he had his own space. Um, I said yeah. So uh, I rented his place, and um, fortunately for me, he had a five gallon um, a water container, but it was full of uh, well. Of course, you'll know what they are, loonies and toonies. <laughs> and, I mean, and that's what I'd like. I'd be borrowing his money. I'd be taking money out of his out of his uh, his jar. But every time I took out whatever I took out, I, I wrote an IOU. Okay. <laughs> I put, it, put it into the jar. I knew he wouldn't mind. We were good friends. Mm -hmm. So it came time to I, I read I read for Nikita, mm -hmm. and the. Um, the description of operations, I mean, it's very bizarre, they described him as he, Klaus Kinski. I don't know if you know who he oh, is. Oh, I know who that is. <laughs> oh, you're, you're a film watcher. You know who he is. Oh, Klaus yeah. Kin, Klaus Kinski, Leonard Cohen, and Dennis Hopper. Oh, gee, now, what I, a combination. Looked, oh, that's what I said. I said, well, how the, how the hell do you play this? Oh, my God. I mean... You know, Dennis Hopper is a lunatic, really. I mean, nobody's he's a good actor. Very intense. Leonard Cohen, I don't know, you know. And Klaus Kinsey, well, you know. So <laughs> I, I went, I read for it for the casting director, and, uh, uh, you know, I chewed up the scenery, and mm -hmm. uh, and I left, and I, I got a callback. So in the callback, there were a couple of the writers, there was uh, Joel Cernow, who was the executive producer, mm -hmm. and uh, and a couple of other people. You know, and, uh, so I in the in the scene that I had done for the casting director, near the end of the scene, I, I got up, and I turned my back on them and and continued the scene, and then turned back. I I mean, I was just chewing up the scenery, and you know, when an actor chews up the scenery, they go, oh boy, that was wonderful. Uh, Joel said to me. Um, I'll tell you what, I'd like you to sit in the chair, but don't get up. Just, you know, just do it from the chair. So I uh, I said, okay, so I did it. And he said to me, um, a little less. I said, oh, no, okay. He's asking for less, I'm in trouble. Actors think because if they don't, you know, if they're not big, uh, they're boring. Okay. So, he uh, two more times when I did it, he asked for less, and I finally I had to say to him, uh, Joe, with all due respect, I, I I seem to sense that your less is a little different than mine. What exactly is it you want me to do? And he said, I want you to do nothing. He said, I want you to sit in that chair, and I want the performance to come out of your eyes. And I said to myself, I'm dead. <laughs> That's the end of it, <laughs> you know. Um, and I did it. And um, I guess that's what they liked, you know, because it's that they, up, as you notice, Operations was a very controlled guy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of his stuff came from just, you know, looking at someone or thinking or saying what he said. And um, in one of the first shows, uh, I did something. Oh, uh, uh, it was something that Burkhoff had done. And I smiled at him while I said, and the director called, cut. He said, cut, cut, cut. I said, what? He said, this man, he said, operations never smiles. And I thought, no, 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 that's, he, he you know, I, I can't play a guy like that. And so eventually, after the second or third show, when I started to feel comfortable in the part, uh, you know, you add a little, a little humor, you know, a wry smile. Or something. I mean, the man, you know, the man's not an automaton. He has, uh, you know, maybe a dark sense of humor, and that has to be brought through. And so, the, yep. so that's basically, you know, and 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 playing with um, uh, with Peter and Alberta, 
were, were complete joys. Uh, you know, Alberta is just a wonderful actress, and I know her from, from L.A. through a close friend of mine. I think and, Pete um, is gorgeous. <laughs> what's that? I think Pete is gorgeous. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Well, listen, you know, um, it was it was funny. My, one of my, my wife's sisters who lives in England had seen the show, and they said to her, because she, she was down in L.A. for that time, they said to her, your husband is playing, uh, is working with that girl. <laughs> He'd like to say, you trust him, you know. And uh, actually, Peter and I never even had a cup of coffee together. Uh, it just never worked out. And I, I, I certainly wasn't interested in her. Uh, I mean, I had a lady, and but Peter was, yes, she was gorgeous. And she also, on top of being gorgeous, she worked very, very hard on that role. When I worked with her. I knew I couldn't fudge. Um, she actually, because of her commitment and her talent, um, brought up brought up my my level of work. Yeah. It's it's as if you know, you work with good people. You got to be good. And and she and she and I must say I give her credit. She made me good. Not that I wasn't. She made me better. So I enjoyed working with her because she she was very serious about it. Alberta. Alberta's a, 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 a she's wonderful. She's such a, a pro. She was such a pro, and um, we got to a point that we could not work when we had a scene together. The close-ups, we couldn't stop laughing. Now I don't know what that. I think it was because we saw, we realized this is sometimes it's so silly. You know, we're talking about this serious stuff, and behind me is the director, and there's the the camera operator there's the makeup the tons of people behind me and, and we we thought it was very funny so we started to, to we couldn't stop laughing uh, if it was her close up and she had to talk to me I had to close my eyes not to look at her because I'd start to laugh and then she'd start to laugh and then she'd see my body starting to shake trying to hold in the, and a couple of directors got very upset with that and they'd be yelling at us <laughs> couldn't help it but it was a it was a, a wonderful experience. Uh, it was a, it was a, it was a great crew. It's a great production office. Uh, from the top on down, it was uh, it was a joy. And I know everyone says that about the shows they work on because it probably is with all those other shows. You're working close with these people, and um, it was a terrific experience. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, Had you seen the uh, the film the uh, the them Nikita or a point of no return prior to this well I saw that one and uh, yeah it's okay yeah I like it I love the original of course mm -hmm. um, yeah the original too. and then I, I had I was doing an ADR one day some voiceover and someone said would you like to meet the original Nikita from the French film <laughs> oh I said yeah I'd love because she was there and I came she was very sweet just yeah. a lovely lady um, yeah, I loved I loved all, all three. Well, then of course they made uh, Nikita with uh, Maggie Q. Um, so a couple of Nikitas floating around. <laughs> well, I'm familiar uh, with the French one, and I'm familiar with uh, Point of No Return with Bridget Fonda. So right. I'm familiar with both of those. And then uh, Gabriel yeah. Gabriel Byrne, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was uh, was it Gabriel Byrne? Yes, it was Gabriel yeah. Byrne, right? Mm -hmm. um, it was. Uh, yeah, it's a very it, it's a. I love film, you know, and mm -hmm. and and I'm I'm a member of the uh, what's it called? I don't remember anyway. American Film Society. No, the uh, uh, the SAG Film Society. You pay a hundred and nine dollars for the year, and you get an enormous amount of films you can see. Except for me, uh, I live. Oh boy, I live. Uh, well, so you can't imagine. It. Well, I, I live in the valley now, which means for me to get into town. To go to the director's guild to see a movie, I've got to get on the the 101 freeway, which means nothing to you. <laughs> I say the 101 freeway. I take that to a um, to a little bit of a distance to a, to another to an exit. Take the exit, go over a canyon, come down. It's a long drive. <laughs> so most of the time, I, I don't use my membership, um, but I keep it because it makes me feel like I'm still in the industry. It's that type of thing. Uh, but you get a chance to see some. Fabulous. I mean, all the uh, first-run movies at the Directors Guild Theater, which of course is is top of the line. It's beautiful. Um, so what I do is I rent 
Oh, God, it's cost a fortune. I, I rent tons of movies from, from iTunes. I've seen hundreds of movies, and don't even ask me which ones they are, because, <laughs> again, it's all a blur. Uh, so I sit, I sit in my, my little room here in my office, and I have a, 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 an Apple computer with a 27-inch screen, mm -hmm. which is fine. I put on my headset or I don't. Uh, I'm, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm a little hard of hearing, so uh, I miss a lot of dialogue. So what I do is I put it on closed caption, so I see the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the um, dialogue running at the bottom. But the problem is I'm looking at the dialogue and I'm missing the scene. But I, otherwise, I'm, I'm learning how to do it. So yeah. I see a lot of movies uh, at home. Well, I yeah, I, I watched your demo reel, you know, and uh, I think you're terrific in the stuff that I've seen you in. So, well, it, it, um, it, it's 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 yeah, I like. Oh, but I just my mind flipped to um, Netflix. You should get Netflix. Yes. Uh, it, it, yeah. I mean, I, I go to Netflix and I see the the all of the the uh, there are so many things to say on Netflix. It will boggle your mind, and mm -hmm. it's like eleven bucks a month. How bad can that be, you know? Uh, and, you know, movies and TV shows. And, and now what they're doing, they're doing um, um, limited series. Yeah. You know, there'll be a series that'll be 10 episodes. And, and you know, that's fine. I guess what they're doing is they're testing the water. You know, instead of shooting 22 shows and the show doesn't go, they, they blew all that money. So 10 episodes... And, and they get a great response, and they go, well, let's, let's, let's shoot another 10. Mm -hmm. But it, it, they have uh, uh, the choice. I'm, I'm serious. You should do it. Okay. You know, but unfortunately, you get hung up in Netflix. You go, well, I'll watch, let me do I'll watch this. Oh, this, is legit. this looks good. Let me, you know, before I know it, I'm sitting at the computer all day, and I'm getting nothing done. <laughs> and that's what happens. Yeah. I had to get off the computer before. I was trying to figure out how to take a photo on my desktop and and put it onto Instagram, mm -hmm. which I don't know how. So I, I I asked the question and I got all these answers. I went to this the thing. I clicked on the thing and this guy was showing me how to do it. You know, he said you go to to a Grambler and you jump blah, 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 or you can go to a, a Google Chrome and you can learn. And I'm and I'm trying. I said, yeah, but it's not working for me. What are you doing? So I took a. I took a photo. I took a picture with with my with my iPhone, mm -hmm. and and um, uh, what did I do? Yeah, wait. I took a picture. How did I get? You know, something. I didn't put it on. Never mind. I, that's that's not important. I that up too. <laughs> um, but you you uh, being that you you enjoy film, and um, there are just a lot of a lot of good shows that you can see. And and so you so you rent a lot of films is what you do yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to when we had video stores. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, we don't have blockbusters or anything like that. I think the last one we had was Jumbo Video, and then that Jumbo that came. Jumbo Video, right? Yep, that. Yeah, they're that. They're not around anymore. I, I it's it's weird because I know. Cause, I know. Isn't that sad? I had an uncle that owned a video store from 1981 to 1988, and there's wow. so many times when I go to do an interview on here, I'll, I'll be like, man, I remember seeing said film from that video store, you know? Uh, and, uh, uh. Yep. Yeah, I kind of miss, uh, I kind of miss uh, blockbusters, or, but, you know, you, the technology is such you don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Look at what well, you wouldn't know, but there was a a store in LA called Tower Records. Oh, I know that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it was. I mean, the hottest place around. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was the place to get the you know your, your CDs, DVDs, and they had the classical. classical. Now, you know, uh, um, uh, thanks to Steve Jobs, he put them out of business um, because, as he said, you know, I I could put two thousand songs in your pocket in this little gizmo, you know, <laughs> and he plus. How many times have you really have you bought an album and you're not crazy about maybe more than half the songs uh, and you got to buy the album just to listen to this thing? Now you just go, you buy the song and you put it onto your your little uh, your little uh, iPhone, not your iPhone, your iPod, so it's or your phone. Um, yeah, there's um, a program called what is it? There's an application called Shazam. You ever hear that? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. It, it's it's S H A Z A M. 
You okay. get the application on your on your phone. Now, you, you're driving in the car, you're listening to music, and you hear this song come on, but you don't know who it is. You say, "Oh, I like I like these people." Oh, who are you? you Press the thing, Shazam, and you turn it toward the radio so it hears what it is. In two seconds, it tells you who it is, the name of the song, the name of the group. Now, oh wow! Yeah. Now, but the thing about that is, and I don't, I don't know. I, 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 well, I have, I'm a, uh, iTunes. I have iTunes, so I don't know if you don't have iTunes, if you can then pr- purchase it directly from iTunes, or maybe there's another way to purchase the song without being iTunes. You, You'd have to investigate that. Hmm. But, you know, it, it, it'll hold it, and you go to it, and it shows you who it is, and, and it says uh, uh, purchase uh, from iTunes. You click on that, and the, and you purchase the song. So well, it, it'll tell you what it is. Shazam. <laughs> well, you know, it's been 35 years since you did Joy of Sex, and I know I liked it when I had you on the phone earlier there. You was asking, why Joy of Sex? You know? <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, probably well, don't get asked I, about I, that a lot, huh? I couldn't have figured that one out. There's some brilliant movies out there. Joy of Sex. I said, what is this kid smoking? <laughs> but the point is, <laughs> it, it's, um, what do you want to know about it? Well, you know what? It's interesting because when I do an interview, there's usually, especially somebody in acting, there's usually uh, a film that I highlight, and then I talk about any their other works go along after it. And it's interesting because uh, it just dawned on me one day when I, uh, I was putting in, uh, an interview together um, to put online. I was like, I've I've interviewed four people from. Uh, joy of sex and uh i didn't even realize it <laughs> until i stopped and thought about it and uh and although i had mentioned it to people I, the people i've interviewed from it i never ever did a focus on it and i thought maybe i maybe i should you maybe should yeah. talk about it a little bit and yeah. of course you played uh dr fox who's <laughs> not a big role but a memorable role and uh doctor that's a little too hands-on <laughs> Yes, I'm surprised I wasn't nominated <laughs> for a Golden Globe. But uh, now, you know, interestingly enough, uh, Michelle Myrink, um, I'm trying to remember now, you'll probably remember, was Colleen Camp in that movie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Colleen, Colleen used to be a good friend of ours. Uh, Colleen, oh, and then there was Martha Coolidge who directed it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, we, I, I met Martha through Colleen, and also Martha was a Canadian. I think we met her up in Canada, so she... She had me in The Joy of Sex, and there was another film I did of hers. Oh, God, I don't remember. Oh, how terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably remember. What else did Martha Coolidge do? Do you remember? Well, she did Valley Girl. She did Real Genius. She did uh, Out to Sea. Uh... Oh, I did two films for her, and I can't, I can't remember the other one. Oh, well. Um uh, so I didn't read for them. I said, you know, because she, we knew, and she, I got the part. Um, and uh, at some point, it was actually even before I did the film, um, um, Colleen came over to our house, and she was talking. She said, listen, there's this young actress, um, her name is Michelle Myring, and uh, Fred Roos and, uh, you know, these other people, they, um, they think she's really going to be real big, you know. Um, she doesn't have a place to stay. Could can she live with you guys for a while? And um, we, well, because we had a spare bedroom up up, up above, and uh, we said sure, no. And and Michelle was living with us, and very it's just a really sweet girl, really nice. And um, <coughs> so that's how we got to know Michelle. But but that's um, yeah. And then and then she she moved on. I don't know, you know, I don't know where she is now. What she's doing. Um, but uh, she was uh, she was our house guest for a bit, and uh, Colleen was <laughs> Colleen's a wild one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she yeah. is uh, she's something else, Colleen. She knows everyone. She's got a phone book as as thick as the uh, as the old uh, uh, Yellow Pages directory. I mean, it, it just she Colleen. I wish if I were half the networker that Colleen is or maybe was, I would have been working a lot more. I'm not a networker. I can't call people up and say, "Hey, uh, how about lunch?" You know, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that kind of guy. I'd love and, to get Colleen on here. <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't even know how to find her. Oh, you, you'd love her. Um, the um, in fact, I haven't seen her in years. It's it, it, um, 
it, it's a very it's it's so it's a kind of a thing that again even now I I don't I don't contact people I know and I know I mean I know I should um, but you know they know you're calling up because you're you're looking for work you're having lunch with them because you want to know what's going on um, and a and a friend of mine who is amazing with computers very smart girl um, she hooked up with a, a lady. Who uh, worked for, or still works for, maybe uh, Clint Eastwood for about 20 years, and that girl wants to be a director. And um, my friend Kathy uh, gave me a script that she wrote. It's a short film, and um, she said, "Would you like to do this?" And I looked at it. I said, "Yeah, I kind of like it. It's nice." Uh, now this girl Cindy has tons of equipment because she worked for Eastwood. She probably, you know, uh, got discounts. And and um, so Kathy's the one who got me on Instagram. She says, "Come on now." She said, "You, you gotta have a, a media presence. You really have to build that." He, she said, "You're not doing anything. Come on now." So she has me on on Instagram, and I'm saying, "But people follow you, and I haven't done anything to be followed." You know, meaning like, "Hey, I went to the uh, delicatessen today. Look at my pastrami sandwich. I don't have anything <laughs> to post." You know, and I'm not sure how to post anything. So I've got to, I've got to learn how to post. Um, actually, she's coming over tomorrow because she wants to look at my clothes. I want to take another, a, a new headshot of me. Okay. Because Cindy said, uh, how old are your headshots? I said, um, <laughs> they're too old. She said, you need a new headshot. I said, but I like her. She said, you don't look like that. And I said, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you see, and I look at, you look at photos of actors, um, famous actors who post their photos or whatever they post their photos if they look fantastic mm -hmm. see what they really look like now you'd go jesus god what a difference you know, they don't they don't want to be shown as you know aging 40 years and they showed the new photos when they were 20 um it, and it's it's again it's an image business you know that's exactly it, it, it depends who the person is because uh lisa langwa still looks great does she oh yeah, yeah. She always look good yeah no, uh, Lisa, of course, was in Joy of Sex. And uh, I, ha I knew Lisa from the movie Class of 1984, which was an early movie of Michael J. Fox. And, uh, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I loved Lisa in it. And, um, and I had her on my show a couple times on the second time. Like, she, she is one of these people. She and I both Canadian. She's very encouraging. And uh, when she sees something in you, um, she'll see if she can help you elevate. And I remember telling her I've never been outside New Brunswick, and she asked me what's stopping me. And um, like I'd never flown before or anything like that. And and um, so she asked me to be her assistant at Horrorama in wow. Toronto in uh, wow. 2017, and I could not say no. And uh, it was my first. I love it. Yeah, my first time in a plane, and I enjoyed it. Oh, my God, really? Yeah, and I remember when I met her, you know. Actually, she picked me up uh, at the airport, and um, and uh, we got acquainted, and and uh, I took her out to dinner, and we got chatting, and uh, and I, I met with her the next day to go help her get her uh, headshots, her new headshots for the event. So I, uh -huh. I, I was happy to help her out, and, and it was an experience all new to me and Lisa and I talk to this day like I actually she called me this week actually oh that's so sweet yeah so w w I went from being her fan to her friend and uh, and um, I enjoyed helping her out and uh, I went there uh, again last year she wasn't at Horror Rama last year but I certainly hope I love that yeah it's a Toronto horror film convention and uh, again I, I hooked up with Lisa and um uh, uh, we went to a, went to dinner and uh, got all caught up, and yeah, Le Lisa's wonderful, and and I'll tell you, she she still looks good, and she hasn't had any work done. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, she's lucky. Yeah. Yes. But uh, Lisa kind of is one of the actually she is the reason I think I've elevated further with this podcast than I have because uh, she's really encouraged me and. Uh, and uh, she thinks I can go further with it. Uh, whether I do, that's uh, guess I don't know. But 
Lisa's been wonderful. I, she's well, been a I great just friend. Up a picture on the uh, uh, Internet Movie Database. Yeah, she does. She looks really nice. Yeah, yep. Lisa. Yeah, she does. Now you mentioned. Uh, I heard you say something about um, uh, you're a comedian. No, no, I'm a wrong? Canadian. Yeah, did you say that? No, I said that uh, that Lisa and I are both Canadian. I think that is one thing. Oh, Canadian, I'll, okay. Yeah. See, Canadian, comedian, okay. <laughs> I have, see, that, that's why I had trouble in school. I have, and this is very strange, it, it wasn't brought up to me until a long, long time ago. I have um, auditor, or, or, auditory dyslexia. Oh, okay. Which which means, you know, you hear things that people didn't say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You said Canadian, I heard comedian. What, which is close, though. You know, Canadian, comedian, it could be, you know. There you and, go. And, and, and until my wife realized that, she always thought I was screwing with her. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's funny. Um, you didn't get to work with Lisa at all on that film, huh? Like, didn't, What's that? You didn't work with Lisa at all no, on I, that. No, 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 I didn't. I, I think I came in for that one day, and... Uh, you get to work with Michelle. Michelle right I'm now resides you know, in... Uh, you know, yeah had a bump on the breast or something like that. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, mole on the breast. Mole and on the, yeah, right, exactly. There you go. There you have it. It's <laughs> yeah, and she got all uh, upset about it, and she let her imagination go wild. and and uh, Exactly, exactly. I have yeah. Michelle Mayrink on the show last December, and uh, she was also in Revenge of the Nerds. I could not get her to do the, the nerd laugh. <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> now, now is, is, has she been working that you know of, or she has kind of left the business? But she, um, I think she teaches acting or something in, in Vancouver. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. yep. Yeah, so she keeps herself busy, but um, yeah, she she's not uh, she's not a Los Angeles kind of girl. I mean, it was it's um she she's just a very sweet, lovely lady, and you know you, you don't want you know. You, you come into this city, you're swimming with the sharks, and, and I'm sure, um, I don't mean to, well, the, the business is the business, it's mm-hmm. a very, it's a very um, a male-oriented business, and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, well, never mind, I won't go there, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, uh, it probably... It wouldn't work out for her because of her personality. Mm-hmm. It's a very difficult. It's not a fun business. Let's put it that way. It can be very, very brutal. Yeah. And and, and especially for a sweet lady like that, it's you know, she she was um, as again swimming with sharks. Mm-hmm. Well, what was your approach to playing Doctor Fox? How did you get the role just to, uh, on uh, an audition? Well, I, I, I slept with the director. I mean, it's the best way to get <laughs> the down, you know. And uh, no, yeah, I'm only kidding. I'm uh, just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I I got the part. It was the part was just uh, um, uh, was just given to me really because of uh, of knowing the director. <laughs> that that never hurts, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she's seen my work, and um, you know, and 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 uh, we we we'd hung out with Martha at times, and um, it's. Uh, I'm trying to find the other film I did for her, and I, I'm on the IMDb, and and um, God, I can't. I don't even see Joy of Sex here. Wow, that's when was Joy of Sex done? Do you remember the year? 1984. 1984. Oh, there it is. Joy of Sex. Yeah. Fox. Son of a gun. There um, you go. Did she do a Did she do a film called City Girls? No, but I'm going to bring that up. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. City Girl. I got it. Yes, 1984. Too. Right. Right. I played some sleeve bag or something. I'm not sure. Martha didn't do that movie, did she? Martha? Yeah. Yeah, she did. She directed that. She directed City Girl? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder whatever she sort of... Uh, she became something. I think president of the directors guild or something like that. I'm not sure, but you know she was one of the early on um, the female directors. Um, I have watched. I have watched so many things on on um, Netflix and rented so many films on iTunes. And I got to tell you, so many women directors. I mean, wow. I, oh I yeah, she that. did do City Girl. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
there are so many female directors working now, which I think is terrific. Um, you know, it used to be closed shop. You know, it's a, a, a men's only fraternity. Well, she got come into it right along the same time that Amy Hackerling did with Fast Times at Ridgemont High as well. So, uh huh. Yep. But uh, yeah, I go bring up uh, City Girl because I'd interviewed Erin Noble from that movie. <laughs> Huh. And she was also in class of 1984 with Lisa Langlois. So. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. I have not seen City Girl. Well, it, you know, I, I wish that I wish that I can um, I can give you, you know, much more information about about uh, of Joy of Sex. It's uh, it wasn't you know, it wasn't a big part. It was just mm-hmm. came after the date. Well, you had day. a funny part. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> you were a little out there. <laughs> well, you know something? I don't even remember. What did I do? Oh, gee, you go. Um, you, you, you kept saying, uh, "I'm just examining the the mold, just examining the texture." Yeah, your eyes keep getting lower and lower. <laughs> your character was very perverse. Yeah, and then okay. you then you go yeah. come back later and I'll I'll do a thorough examination and it was a little yeah. out there especially since she's playing a teenager even though she wasn't but that <laughs> that came about too like even when the TV personality is is hooking up with her you got a lot of suggested underage uh, sexual uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even though the actors were not. So. <laughs> yeah, even though the actors were not exactly yeah suggested in certain ways but that's the <laughs> remember the oh i can't stand that goddamn call waiting now call them back um <laughs> yes i i miss the old day where the phone rings if it's busy you know they call back it's like it there it goes again you know They're yeah busy. and this is the this is the, actually the uh well it's not important uh <laughs> really <laughs> but but it was um yeah, it was, and, and it was fun working with Martha. She's a she's a very good director, and and um, you know she knew what she wanted, and she knew how she wanted to play it, and and uh, you know, it, and it's and it's, it gets done, and and she again, I think she was one of the the forerunners of of female directors. Oh yeah, and and that's why they, you know, it was such a big deal uh, for her, and not only for her, but you know they they made it a, a thing about it uh, of her, of course, being a female director. But now, you know, females, the females are all over the place. They're mm-hmm. taking over. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's nice because they have a different sensibility. And, mm-hmm. and I think they have, a th- when I've seen films, uh, uh, relationship films, uh, 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 mostly relationship films, when it's a female director, um, it's, got a, it's got a, for me, it's got a real, it's got a better sense to it. Oh, I, I think I would agree with you. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah because, come on, they're, 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 they're different than us, you know. What I'm saying? Well, you look I mean, at look Fast nice. Times at Ridgemont High, Valley Girl, you know. Yes, I, I yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a very, uh, you know, you look at some of these films and you find out, oh, that was a woman. To re- oh, well, no wonder it, 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 it worked better on the relationship between a man and a woman mm-hmm. or a situation because they've experienced it. Yep. You know. Men can only uh, shoot it. I mean, directors by by what they what they heard or what they've known. Women do it because of of what they actually experience, and that's the way they do it. It's um, and I'm not saying there are not uh, male directors out there who who are very you know very sensitive and, and understand women. You gotta who was who it uh, in the in the forties? Um, oh God. Billy Wilder. Billy okay, Wilder. yep, great director. Yeah, yeah, he 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 understood women. I mean, he mm-hmm. he, he knew how to do it, you know. And and it's it's a very, um, it's a rarity when a director really has a sensibility, or when when when, to me, um, uh, you know, same with women. I'm saying the same with women, but I'm talking about men. You know, we we have a feminine side. Uh, I don't mean feminine. I mean we like to run around in high heels. We have, <laughs> <laughs> we have, you know, if you saw if you saw my home, you would see certain things are 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 done over lamps with the colored fabric, and it's really beautiful when the light comes on. You know, most men will not do stuff like that because it's not it's not masculine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, 
I, I like that feminine side because it's the softer side. It's, yes. It's a, it's a totally different thing. And the same with women. Women, you know, have that male thing about them at times. And, and, um, and they understand certain things about about what what men do and how and, you know sometimes when people say oh boy she's a real bitch well what they, uh, if it were a guy they say boy he's tough you know <laughs> but, yeah. but the woman she's a bitch um and i and i and i really i think that's an awful thing to to put on someone uh because a strong woman intimidates men uh you know men get very you know because of their their egos you 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 got to be a strong guy to be able to to be soft and to be gentle mm -hmm. and 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 a lot of men will not be that way they're terrified of that soft side they think it's a weakness and it's not a weakness it's actually a strength mm -hmm. and uh but we're getting we're getting to philosophy now but um <laughs> yeah uh it, it was uh the joy of sex was fun to work on and and all the people working on it were fun to work with. Michelle was wonderful, and Colleen, that wild woman. And, uh, <laughs> Christopher Lloyd was in this. And, uh, oh, God, I don't even remember. Really? Who else was in this? <laughs> yeah, he's in this. Cameron Dye, uh, oh, Joanne Barron. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I've, my God. I've had Joanne Barron on the show. I've had Heidi Holicker on the show. Good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I, although I heard early... And the pre-production of this film, uh, they were supposed to get John Belushi, and uh, of course oh, he had passed away. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, that would have been interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, John passed away way too early. Oh God, yeah. You know something? It was a real. You know, it's it's. I don't know. So many goddamn people are dying with drugs. It's mm -hmm. Just. It 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 kills me. Uh, you know, it's it's. You got everything going on and. You know, it's just, uh, they actually, uh, so, someone was hired, uh, actually, I think the guy was um, an ex-FBI agent, whatever the guy was, that guy was good, but he was hired specifically, I think by the studio or by someone to be John Belushi's shadow, to make sure he never got drugs, but he always got drugs. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. heard these stories, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, someone would be walking by and John, someone would hand him off to John. The guy, the guy couldn't be with him every 27 seconds of the day. He just, uh, I was working as a bartender, uh, and, and uh, some girl came in one night, and you remember, I remember her, she sat at the end of the bar, and she looked really shaken up, and she said, I, um, 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 I, need, a, I need a brandy, you know, I give her a brandy. Soon, finish that one. She said, "Could I have another one, please?" I give another one. She had about two or three, and she said, um, "She said, I don't know. How did she put it? She said, I, she said, I, I, I don't know. She said, I, I, I think, I, I think I, I may have, I may have killed John Belushi. I'm not sure. She, and I'm, I'm looking at her like, what? I said, what are you talking about? She said, well, I, I was over at the Chateau Mimone, and we were, we were, we were, we were doing drugs, and we were." You know, all sorts of, and she was babbling. I don't know what the hell she was babbling about. And um, she said, I, "I, you know, I think he's dead." She said, "I'm, I'm not sure." You know, and then she paid a bill and she left. Oh she wow! Said, and then, of course, later on, I heard that John Belushi was dead from a fucking overdose. Yeah. Um, at the Chateau Memo. Now she was probably there. Now I don't know if she killed him or she gave him something, but you know, I, I thought, wow, that was really bizarre. And and um, that's the sadness of it. That's the way it, it, it ends. You look at the River Phoenix, gorgeous mm -hmm. young kid, terrific actor. Um, what you know, you wonder what is it that they're missing? You know, it there's something there's something wrong there. You know, you're on the top of the world. You're making great money. Yep. You know, you got fame, you got fortune. It means nothing. It all means nothing when it comes down to it. It, it's some people can handle it, some people can't, and that's the way they are. But uh, again, we're, we're moving off the subject here. We're talking about other things, and yeah. I don't know how you're gonna, you're gonna you're gonna how you're gonna draw any time out of this from joy of sex. But other than that, oh gee, <laughs> we're talking about everything. Joy joy of sex was uh, 
of course, uh, Martha's follow-up to Valley Valley Girl, and done Valley just be- Girl. just before uh, Real Genius. I guess Joy of Sex didn't do all that well did, either, did it? No, I probably don't. So she did Real Genius. That's the one where the two kids uh, invent this. Um, yeah. What's her name? Uh, Oh no, that you're thinking about weird science. That's uh, oh, John yeah, Hughes. Right. There you go. Oh, Real you're, genius. You're good, man. You're good, kid. I gotta tell you. <laughs> Real genius was with Val Kilmer. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was thinking of yeah, right. Real science hmm. with the the hot uh, whatever her name is. I can't even think of it now. Um, but d- uh, yeah, she married uh, um, what's his name? The uh, Steven Seagal. Oh, uh, Kelly LeBrock? Kelly LeBrock, yeah, she was mad to Steven Seagal, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, what, uh, ask you, me, talk to me, what do you, you want? You've <laughs> got, what you've, do you want, kid? <laughs> you've got some <laughs> other films i got to bring up, like Hunter's Blood, for example. I've interviewed Bruce Glover. He's, he's been on here the longest of any of my guests. He was on here for three hours. <laughs> like, oh, you're kidding. Oh yeah, oh. Br- Bruce was a talker, and I don't. And I, that's not a complaint either, because people want to hear my guests, not me. And I'll tell you, Bruce told could tell stories. Oh well, you know, and he's been around. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's, uh, he's done some good uh, good uh, character work, and his uh, his son uh, a little strange, but uh, <laughs> Crispin, yeah, <laughs> Crispin, a little strange. Mm-hmm. But you know something, when you see him in a movie, it works because he's so strange. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know. He's like um, uh, Christopher Walken. Oh like yeah, Christopher Walken's a little strange. Mm-hmm. He's got, you know, when I when I found out uh, that that he used to be a dancer and he's a wonderful dancer, you watch him in his movies, and and he does he doesn't do dance moves, but you watch the way he moves. He moves like the he has he has movements like a dancer. He does stuff physically, and and it's just. Um, it's wonderful. He's got a great face. He's got so. It's interesting when you get someone like uh, Crispin Glover. You get the, you know, uh, um, Chris Walken. You get these guys who are a little off center, and that's more interesting. Oh it yes. Really is. Yeah, but, you had way, some. Br- what's that? What? What was you to say about Bruce? I was going to say Br- Bruce um, is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sketch artist. Mm-hmm. He carries a thick. He was carrying a thick. A, a book with a, a, a sketching book, and and you know he and he just sits during the breaks and he's sketching what he's looking and and fabulous, um, terrific work. He's got tons and tons of those books, but he's very talented. He's a very talented artist. Mm-hmm. Very. Um, uh, uh, Martin Landau was the same way. You know, I met him once. He had his book with him, <laughs> 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 but and he has do- he had dozens of them, but. But very talented. I mean, very, very real-looking, wonderful characters and faces and situations. Um, but but Bruce was like that. He was a he was a very careful guy. We had a scene in in Hunter's Blood where I, as the ranger who actually never rode a horse, uh, <laughs> we had we had these these barbarians uh, supposed to be chained behind the horse and the horse is walking, and and that they were going to put the and, and, and Bruce was the one who said, uh-uh, no, sorry, uh, we're not being chained to the saddle of a horse by a guy who doesn't had never rode a horse. So he said, we'll hold the chains. He said, he said, if the horse gets out of hand, we'll just drop the chains. And he was right. I don't know why no one thought of that. They had these things dragged around their, 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 their wrists, and the horse did something weird. These guys are in trouble. Yep. So... No, no, he he spoke up immediately. He said, uh-uh, mm-hmm. no. Oh, yes. And, of course, I haven't seen Hunter's Blood, but I looked at it, uh, and some of the people that are in it, Sam Bottoms, unfortunately gone, was so good at Apocalypse Now. What was he oh, like? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He was, he was excellent. And I'll, I'll tell you that what, there was, well, uh, there was, there's a scene in that where uh, I get uh, captured by these <laughs> crazy guys. Mm-hmm. And and um, Sam and uh, and um, I can't remember the other guys. And they the hunters come into this uh, opening, and I'm hanging from a tree. Mm-hmm. Now, the scene um, I had to go to a, uh, a a guy who does special effects stuff, and he's well known. I can't remember his name now, 
but they had to make a full they had to make a full body thing of my body going down to my crotch um and then you know because so, i'm naked but you don't see anything you know because it's it, well and and um and is that this so what happens in the movie they they beat me with the butt of a gun they stab me <laughs> they shoot me and then they hang me <laughs> oh gee yeah. So I'm I'm hanging, uh, I mean not hanging, but we're getting ready to shoot the scene. And it was cold that morning, and and uh, you could see smoke coming out of steam coming out of my mouth. And the director said, "Well, you're going to have to hold your breath when we come in for the close up because you, you're dead." Um, I said, "No, I understand." So we took a break. I'm standing there. Then I, they, I got next to the space heater, so I got warm, and then I got out back into the cold. And then I got back out into the heater. And then I got back out to the cold. And then they're ready to shoot. And they pour, oh, they pour all this cold blood all down my body. I was freezing. So the shot came. I had to hold my breath. And the next thing I heard, I felt, I felt pins and needles. And I heard, I heard the stunt guy saying, he's going down. And they grabbed me. And, and I went down. I passed out from hypothermia. Oh. And I'm, on, I'm on the ground and I'm shaking like a leaf. I'm hearing voices in spurts. I, I like help. What? That, nothing was mm -hmm. making sense. Uh, I was all pins and needles. So they they pick they get me up and I I, I found out I'm able to walk to my trailer and it had rained the night before. That goes to show you how careless people are. All of the cables are running through puddles. Oh. Uh, I get. Uh, yeah. I got to the I got to the makeup trailer. I stepped on the metal step, put my hand on the metal rail, and, and the second AD who was helping me, I became the ground, and he was the one who was getting electrocuted. It was just, it was bizarre. He was holding on to me and jumping up and down that he was, and someone had to knock him off me. Now, I didn't feel it because it was going through me with a way that I wasn't feeling it. And <laughs> it knocked the poor guy down, got me into the trailer, Clean me up a little bit and rush me. There was a hospital close by. They got brought me into the hospital. I mean, these people are like, "Oh, good God, what happened to this character?" You know, covered in fake blood, of course. And um, and I was treated for hypothermia. And and we went to shoot it again. I said to my agent, uh, "Am I getting paid extra for this, considering what happened?" <laughs> so he he tried, and of course. Uh, the producer said, no, I'm sorry, it's in the contract. <laughs> if he doesn't get it one day, we do it again. I showed up on set. It was a lovely day. There was a paramedic van there with the paramedics, oxygen tank. I mean, also, I feel like such a pussy. I really did. It was like, and everyone made fun of me. They said, oh, we brought the ambulance for you, Mr. Tough Guy. <laughs> it was like I couldn't live it down. You know, yeah. But it was, it was, you know, it was, uh, it was scary. Yeah. Um, that had never happened to me before, ever. Uh, so it became, it became the joke on the show. But uh, yeah, it, it was um, Hunter's Blood. Actually, I became actually I'm still friends now with the with the producer uh, uh, Merle Schreiberman. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you had other people in that too: Kim Delaney, Joey Travolta, Charles Cypers. Anything oh, about yeah, them? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm. It was a nice cast. Yeah. It was a nice cast. Um, so it it, uh, it worked out fine, um, but I'm trying to, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a long line, you know, and you when you when you do films and you do a lot of other stuff and you you know you, you meet a lot of people and it was a very uh, yeah it was fun it was a, it was a nice it was a nice shoot, but uh, I'm 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 glad it was over. I mean I I just. Uh, <laughs> not something I want to be doing again. Uh, but other than that, you know, there there are uh, there are a lot of other, you know, there's a lot of TV stuff, a lot of, uh, and a lot a lot of it was done in Canada. Yeah. You know, Canada Canada was uh, was wonderful for me. And again, I love Canadians. I just <laughs> I just love the way they are. I I they, you know that they're, they're so they're so different. Than we are here in the states, you know. When the police went on strike because they wanted better revolvers, you know, they had six shooters, and and they were dealing with you know drug gangs that had AK-47s, and 
they went on strike, and this is how the Canadian police go on strike. They didn't stop work. They, they didn't wear their hats. <laughs> that was it. We're not wearing our hats. We're going on strike. This is it. This is where, you know. So they, that, that was the way they were, they were going up against the system. They took their hats off. <laughs> Here in the States, the cops would just walk off the job. Not the Canadians. Oh, no, no. they you know, got to protect the public. We'll take our hats off. <laughs> So very gentlemanly, you know, it was a very, I thought that was so sweet. Of course, now, you know, times have changed. You know, they have the, the weapons they needed. Um, but, um, I want to, know. I wanted to ask you about Hollywood Shuffle. Oh, that's, uh, that again was, uh, I was friends with the two casting directors who, who said to me, actually they said to, to Robert Townsend one day, he needed someone to play a couple of roles, you know, different roles, uh, you know, you know, Dirty Larry, uh, Dirty Harry, Dirty Larry, uh, Alan Dayas, uh, all that. And they just said, well, we noticed a, a terrific actor, and they, they gave him my name. I went in, I met him, and that was it. I didn't have to read for it. Um, the the Amadeus one with the wig, <laughs> um, my scene partner didn't show up. And uh, Robert said, well, can, can you just improvise something? I said, yeah, sure. So I, that's what I did. I improvised a Shakespearean thing or whatever it was, and that's how it worked. And it was wonderful working with Robert. He's a, first of all, he's a talented guy, and he's very funny. Uh, he, he, he didn't, you know, pressure to do this on the next move. And to, you know, he told you what it was about, and you just you went ahead and did it. And what I, I liked about it, it was really a family affair. All the people who, all of us who were working on it, the cast, the crew, whatever, Friends and and wives and husbands or whatever, they pitched in to help. They they brought the food, you know. But the wives would cook. The girls got to bring. They bring the food. Um, we shot one day out on the street. We didn't have a permit, and the police pulled up, got out of the car, and they were saying, "You have a permit to." to and while they were doing that, uh, we were quietly continuing seeing the cameraman was able to. He had the camera. He was holding the camera. And he was still filming while <laughs> the police were asking for permits. And we got the shot. It was wonderful. Um, and, and we did a lot of those shots on the run, you know, in different areas. And, and uh, he'd rent the equipment on a Friday. <laughs> and over the weekend, you didn't have to pay for it, which I don't know why they do that, because, you know, they know people are using the equipment. You didn't have to say rent the equipment on Friday and return it on Monday. Um, and you get two free days to, to shoot and do whatever it is you have to do. And a lot of people chipped, and it was a very funny film to work on because because everyone in that film, they were so, these guys were, all of them, the guys, the girls, they were so talented and they were so, they were just wonderful to work with. And and so was Robert, and so was Keenan, Keenan Ivy Wayans, um, two crazy people. And yeah, it, it worked out. We didn't get paid. Uh, it was, uh, uh, we're going to, if it went and whatever happened, we would then, then we'd get paid. We got a, um, I think one percent or one percent, whatever it was. I don't know. But and then when the film was picked up by uh, Sam Goldman, mm-hmm. and we we all got paid for the work we did, and uh, he kept his promise, you know. And then that's uh, that's what I, re- I respect that about Robert. He said, you know, I make money. I, I, you know, I sell this thing. You all go, you're all going to get paid. And he he kept his word. Um, so yeah, I did a couple of things for Robert. I, I I enjoy him. Yeah, Hollywood Shuffle was, you know, and what made it uh, really uh, uh, wonderful is that his advertisements about you know paying for it on his credit cards, uh, which is what he did. He put him, put himself into hock, but it it paid off. And um, and uh, you know it's a Hollywood story. What can, what can I say? You know it's uh, yeah. What else? Okay. <laughs> you, also, you also did No Way Out with a young Kevin Costner. You had Gene Hackman and Sean Young. Well, I, you can say that I did No Way Out, but uh, <laughs> I didn't have much to do in that. Actually, well, to be quite honest with you, uh, um, a friend of ours wrote it, and he said to me, you want to be in the movie? <laughs> I said, yeah, okay. He said, be at the studio at uh, whatever time it was. And it was uh, I was uh, in the uh, the area where they were trying to bring up the photo that was on the uh, the Polaroid so it was a it was a quick thing it wasn't 
it wasn't something that uh, you know had like eight scenes in it. It sounds wonderful. Uh, I don't mean to downplay it, but it is what it is. Um, well, you went back again with Keenan Ivory Wayans for uh, I'm Going to Get You, Sucker. <laughs> yeah, all right. I was in that, too. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that here. Yeah, they, they cut my scene, though. Oh. I think I had two scenes in that. You know, as always, you go to a movie and you go, what happened to my work? <laughs> it, you know, they need to, they got to cut it for time, you know what I'm saying? And, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't move the film along, then, you know, it's, uh, they have to cut it. That's the way it is. I don't uh, know. If people can sit through three hours of Titanic, then they can sit oh through, God. you know. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I know, it's insane. Yeah. But it's, but it's um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta ask about Harlem Nights because you got uh, you know you have Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor in the well, same Harlem, movie. Yeah, uh, Harlem Harlem Nights. Well, that's, yeah, you, you, you're good. I like you. You're leading me into. You're like you're like uh, Johnny Carson leading the guest. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. you have to. Um, the Ho- Harlem Nights. I read for a different role. I, I, I read for the desk sergeant, and and I'm in this room, and I'm serious. The room must have been. It was so tiny, I could almost sit in Eddie's lap. You know, but and it was uncomfortable because there was Eddie and a couple of other people and the casting director, and um, and and Eddie said, "Wait, wait, wait, no, let him." I want to read the the cop thing. It was it was a? They read the cop thing and he started to laugh, but it almost threw me because it was that that Eddie Murphy laugh. You know, oh, oh you know how he laughed. Yeah, that funny laugh. And I, so I had to I had to focus. You know, so. Uh, so I was I was able to do it. It was okay. So I got the part, and um, it, it it was. Uh, I remember one night we were shooting, and I was I was behind uh, uh, Richard Pryor, and we were watching it. And he turned around, which I thought was very sweet. He turned around and said to me, "I love your work, brother." Oh wow! And I yeah, well, I, I thought he was being nice. I said to him. Well, thank you, Richard. But uh, come on, I don't. I don't think you know my work. He turned around again. He said, "Yeah, man." He said, "I." He said, "I saw you Hollywood Shuffle." He said, "Good work, man. I liked it, you know." And that was it. So maybe he wasn't lying. I mean, maybe he did see it and he remembered. But you know, it was nice. And and mm-hmm. and at, at a break, Red Fox, Richard Pryor, and Eddie Murphy were standing around talking and laughing. And I, I sort of, uh, you know, quietly made my way over to the threesome. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't intrude, like, you know, to really get in closer to my, it was on the fringes <laughs> of the conversation. And I said to myself, all right, Eugene, come on, man, you gotta come up with something real funny, you know? I mean, you got three giants here. Say something really that would make them laugh their asses off. And I thought to myself, there's no way I'm going to say anything that's going to make these guys laugh. I better keep my mouth shut, <laughs> which is what I did. Uh, you know, had I, you know, had something like I like George Carlin, I come and say something, get some laughs. But there was no way that I was going to say anything with Red Fox, Richard Pryor, and Eddie Murphy. So I just stayed back and, and listened, and they said stuff, and we laughed, and I laughed, and you know, and that that was it. That was it. Um, you couldn't, you couldn't get, you couldn't intrude on that conversation because uh, I was way out of my depth. What was Eddie Murphy like as a director? He was terrific. He had, and he's, and he's clever. He had, you got to understand. I think he wrote it. He's producing it. He's directing it. He's acting, and it's very difficult, and to wear all those hats and have such a, 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 an immense amount of people working under you. What, what he. What he did was, I noticed, he had very good people working around him. He, his cinema, Eddie would want to set up a shot, either inside or outside, and this is, he, he said, all right, well, I mean, I'm just making up the, 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 the DOP's uh, name. I don't remember his name. He would say, Bob, this is what I want to do. This is a shot. I want to do this and that and that and this and that. And, and uh, Bob would say, can't do it, Eddie. <laughs> and Eddie would say, what do you mean? He said, can't do it. You can't make this, and, and the guy would explain it to Eddie because uh, he knows best. He knows the lighting. He knows the camera moves, and he would he would help Eddie set up the shot because he knew more than Eddie. Uh, mm-hmm. I think this is the first film Eddie directed, if I'm correct. Yes. I uh, don't know. It could be. I, I think I think it was. It was his first film he directed, and and therefore this guy was 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 basically every time Eddie wanted to do something, he would turn to the DOP. He said, "What do you think?" 
And the guy said, yep, he said, that'll work. But he said, if we just move it a smidgen over this way, then you've got your lighting coming in here. Because if you do it the other way, we have to move the whole set. Uh, he said, that's, it's, it's, that's ridiculous. We don't want to do that. It's, gonna, it's very costly to move a wall out and move the lighting. He said, if you do this, I can get the camera here. We can get the lighting. He said, it'll be perfect. And he said, great. All right, let's set it up. So this, that's what I'm saying. When you see movies um, like Eastwood or Woody Allen, or these, they're almost always using the same people. Oh, yes. Wardrobe, makeup, whatever it is, you know, um, um, people drop with it. They're, Listen, you, you're busy next week. What do you want? You? I'm on it. Okay. You know, the cinematographer knows. The DOP knows how Woody works. They all know how they all work. And he doesn't have to think. He just does what he does, and people do it. He hires the perfect actors. He doesn't really direct, direct. And this emotion, here, you know, some actors are saying, well, what's my motivation? Well, your fucking motivation is just to get the scene done, you know? Enough with the motivation, you know? <laughs> Please, give me a break. Well, is it raining out? Did I just lose my cat? You know, it's like, oh, enough with the, you know, <laughs> enough with the Stanislavski, okay? Let's just get to work. Um, and, and a lot of it, you know, People don't understand in acting, and and, it's, and uh, you've heard this saying a million times, uh, more is less. Mm-hmm. And it, in a lot of ways, it's it's true, because we think as actors, or even as people, if we're not saying something interesting, we're boring. But sometimes, uh, I remember, what, and I always try to remember this, I was doing a play, and, and I was on stage, it was a, a, a little bit of a break, but I, I was standing and I, I was thinking about something, I don't, I don't know what, and the, the writer, producer was, was out there in the, with, where the audience would be, of course, but this is rehearsal, and uh, he was watching me, which I wasn't aware of, and then I, I saw, he said, you know something? I, I said, what? He said, you do more doing nothing than most people do doing something. And for a second, I thought he insulted me. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought he was insulting me. And then I, I thought about it later, and he, I think about that now, and I'm saying, that was a wonderful <coughs> yeah. thing to hear, because uh, you don't have to try and be interesting, you just have to be. And, and people will read into the quietness. The camera never lies. You know, that camera just comes onto your face and 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 you and you're uh, you're thinking uh it'll pick it up and then the audience will make of it what they will instead of delivering it to the audience on a silver platter because then they don't have to work that's boring the audience likes to work they like to think wow what is he thinking about now you know what the and that's that's what this guy meant when he said that which took the onus off of me <coughs> yep god bless you yeah of of thinking i have to chew up the scenery um, and, and and be interesting. You just have to, you know, you just have to uh, I don't know if you're familiar with an actor named Jeff Corey. I heard the name. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful actor. Also, a very strange guy. <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful actor. Uh, and he was a teacher. And I, and I studied with him for a short while. And um, and, and I had seen a film he had done the, uh, two nights before, uh, Lonely Are the Brave. It's a wonderful, wonderful movie. If you ever get a chance to see it, remember it. Lonely Are the Brave, Jeff Corey, and I'm sorry I can't remember the, the black actor's name, but it's, it's basically a, a two-scene movie about this actor. Uh, Jeff Corey plays a psychiatrist, and this actor, uh, I'm sorry, this character, the other character, uh, cannot walk. He was... Uh, Something happened in combat in World War II that he's paralyzed. He can't walk. And Jeff Corey is the psychiatrist. And the scenes between the two of them are wonderful. And, and at one point, he's, 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 he says to the guy, he says, you goddamn nigger. He said, get up. And it was like, whoa. It was great, great work. And, and, and you, should, you should see the movie, Lonely Are the Brave. Okay. And, um, so I said to him, I seen Lonely Out of Brave the other night, and we just chatted a bit. And he said, he said, you know what my concept is of acting? He said, you know what I do? He said, when I'm in a scene, all I do, he said, not all I do, but what helps, he says, I have a movie running through my head. And it's 
or even a slideshow. And, and what happens is sometimes you're talking about something funny and something sad comes in, you, boom, a, 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 a camera, not the camera, the, the slideshow stops at your mother's funeral in your mind. And it, and it, and it connects to you and you're, you're doing the opposite of what's going on in the scene, which to me is even, which is interesting because something is really going on. You start, you connect with certain things which are, which are not apropos to what is happening in the scene and that is what becomes interesting because it's entire gangsters, they look like gangsters. <laughs> I mean, they, you know, it's like just typecasting, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we all expect a gangster to look a certain way. But you you get a guy who is who's very who's a very sophisticated and he's a little not feminine but a little effete and well dressed and you're saying well what and then you you see this guy uh, he kills someone but he does it with such pleasure and such violence and you see that he he gets off on it it's so against character that it startles you and that's that's what that's that's what Jeff Corey was saying. You'll pick up bits and pieces if you if you put a slideshow in your head, and uh, I always remember that. And it's it's an interesting thing, you know. It's uh, everyone thinks when you go in to read a scene, well, where's the? I understand some of this works. Where's the character? When, where, who, what, and why? Yeah, I got to know all these things when you come into the scene, and it makes for the scene. I I like to if I go in for a meeting. And I didn't have time, or they, they hand me a, a, the, side, the scene. They say, well, you want to go out and, uh, and work on this? And I, I, I really do. I say, um, let me see if there's some words in this I can't pronounce and learn them. I said, let's go right now. And they said, without preparation? I said, let's just try it. And I love to just go off the top of my head. Yeah. Whatever, whatever happens, happens. And a lot of times it's pure gold. It's wonderful. I didn't plan anything. I didn't, you know, I didn't learn to do something on a certain line. It's just automatic. And and that's the way I like to do things. It's just like jumping off the cliff. <laughs> One last well, film. Now uh, that I, be I bent your ear about all this nonsensical <laughs> stuff. What else would you like to know? <laughs> oh, I just had one more film I wanted to ask about. It was Stepping Out. You got there's a musical and you have Liza Minnelli oh, and Chili Winter. Oh, yeah. Oh, that that was you know, I bring back nice memories. It's a wonderful cast, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was working uh, in a retail store in Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. a store called Hammaker Schlemmer. <laughs> okay. Um, a very well-known store in New York. They used to have a magnificent store that was about seven stories tall, and they sold everything in that store. You wanted to buy a biplane? They got it. Whatever you wanted, they had. So I'm in this store, and I... Uh, you know, I was just, you know, making a living, and uh, the phone. Uh, I got a phone call um, from my agent in Canada. Okay. She said, Eugene, hi, it's Gail. I said, hi. I knew something was up. You know, she's calling me. So she said, um, I got something for you. Um, you. You don't have to read for it. Uh, um, it, it. You got the part if you want it. And I said, well, what is it? She said, it's a film. Well, Stepping Out is supposed to be Liza Minnelli's uh, a comeback film, and it's directed by uh, a gentleman by the name of Lewis Gilbert. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not familiar with Lewis Gilbert. She said, well, we can start with Alfie, <laughs> <laughs> Shirley, Shirley Valentine, and Educating Rita. Is that a good start? I said, I'll take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, so I, I took it. I, I fly to Canada, Toronto, mm -hmm. and I remember... The first day, they took me to the theater where they were rehearsing, and I come in, and they're on, Lewis is on the, on the stage with everyone rehearsing a scene, and uh, I come in, and, and John Dark, who was his director, I'm sorry, his producer, was so, I've never been treated like this, it was so, he, they brought, brought me in, and he said, uh, you must be Eugene. Uh, I said, yes, He's, I said, you must be Mr. Dark. He said, no, no, call me John. He said, what a pleasure it is to have you. I said, well, you talking to me? Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. And um, there was a little bit of a break, and John yelled down onto the stage, uh, Lewis, uh, uh, Gene Glazer is here. And, and Lewis stopped rehearsal, 
came a real gentleman came walking all the way over to me and he, he took my hand and he said Eugene he said thank you so much he said for considering doing this and joining us it's a pleasure to have I'm like no one talks to I've never been spoken to like that you know so I get it to wardrobe and you get over here <laughs> it was I, I it made you feel important is what he did oh wow and, uh, well I said well, well well thank you and uh and it was we went to work the next day we were shooting uh, on a different set and I fi- I finished one take I finished it when I was sitting at the dinner table uh, and it was one day he said oh I said cut print he saw the look on my face that I wasn't sure if, if if I delivered what he wanted and he just looked at me and he said don't worry he said I, I got what I wanted he said it, w- it was it was perfect I said oh, okay um, I then, and it's really fun because Shelley Winters, of course, is such a character. Mm-hmm. She, she um, did it. It was a quite a, a bit of a long, involved scene, you know, on the stage with a lot of characters, and and he said, "Oh, I said, let's cut, let's print," and he was always finished every day at five o'clock sharp. Boom, no overtime, no working into the night, done. And um, oh, he also directed, by the way, a James Bond movie. So the guy knows about the directing. Yeah. So. Um, she says to him, uh, Lewis, darling, she said, um, I need another take. And he says, oh, no, no, Shelley, he said it was wonderful. He said, we, we don't need it. And she said, Lewis, I want another take. I don't get another take. I'm going back to Los Angeles now. And he was very, very nonplussed. He said, oh, he said, well, what, Shelley? And he turned to his AD. He said, uh, 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 Robert, he said, would you book a flight for Shelley? To, uh, for L.A. Thank you. Okay, thank you. He said, all right, darling. He said, thank you. And he walked away. That was it. He didn't make an argument. He didn't carry on nothing. Half an hour later, she came walking. <laughs> she came back on stage like a little pussycat. She said, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Lewis. She said, I'm, I'm going to stay. He said, oh, thank you, darling. That was very sweet of you. And, and off he went. He handled it. Beautiful. First of all, he worked with her in, in Alfie. They did Alfie together. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he he was so uh, stepping out was such a wonderful experience, and and with those wonderful actors, uh, it, it was oh. And the reason I got the part, I forgot that. There's a, a it was a casting director in Toronto, and um, the name escapes me, uh, and he was casting it, and and um, um, Lewis said to him. Uh, I, I don't have this part cast. He said, um, he said, I, I need someone, he said, who has very, very strong, steely blue eyes. Oh. And the casting director <laughs> knew exactly who it was. It was me, which <laughs> I thought was wonderful. And, and, and that's how I got the part. He just, you know, he said to Lewis, I know it's just the guy. And Lewis said, book him. And that was it. And I thought, wow. That's really nice. I like that, you know. So, it, <laughs> so again, the blue eyes worked well for me, and uh, and and unfortunately, the film didn't go anywhere because the uh, the management uh, or whatever the power play at the Paramount had had switched, and the new guy who came in uh, took everything that the other guy had made and it was ready for a wide release off the schedule. He didn't want anything. This guy did who he's replacing to be a hit so this the film lasted two weeks and then it was gone that was it oh. so uh yeah it, it was uh, yeah it was nice it was nice working with these people well you've done a lot of television you know and oh, a God, lot yeah. of, yes uh, aside from nikita what else uh, notable that stands out to you that you enjoyed doing? You get so many credits here. Uh, give us some of your your favorite uh, television programs that you okay, were in. Fortunately, for my terrible memory, I'm at the IMDb looking at my resume. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's see, because I wouldn't remember a goddamn thing. Um, what else? Okay, we got the we got the, well, 24 was fun. 24 was supposed to be, I believe. Uh, more than more than one show, mm-hmm. um, because the character, the, my character and my uh, cohort, uh, poisoned the president, and I figured, whoa, nice storyline. Now they got to come after us, you know. Well, they changed the storyline over the summer, and um, 
and I, I hadn't been called, so I watched the first show of the season, and um, the president is wherever he is, and, and one of his Secret Service guys <laughs> comes in and says, uh, Mr. President, the, those two men who uh, tried to poison you, he, uh, he said, that they were taken care of. I said, well, that's the end of that one. Okay. So that's uh, <laughs> that moved right along. No, uh, let's see, there's not a pair in the dark. Well, if everyone sees going, it's out of out of out of out of well, going down here, I think you, you did uh, an episode of Charlie's Angels. What was that like? Oh, God, don't even go there. It was That was the first thing I ever did, ever, and I was terrified because when I had my close-up, I, I, the camera was to to the left of Dick Gauthier, which was to my right, mm -hmm. and um, I, I was terrified of the camera. I, I, I wouldn't look past Dick Gauthier. I would go this way. I had too many things to do. I had a cigar. I had a drink. I had a, I didn't even go to it. I said to the director, come on, you're giving the kid too much. And, and the director said to me, w w what are you, to me, he said, w what are you doing? I said, well, I've given the background uh, just stupidly, stupidly. Well, the character has it in front of him, and then he's a mother. And then he said, yeah, well, you're not showing me anything. And I felt like rolling into a hole. Um, that was one of the worst experiences ever. And I had a friend who saw the show. He said, were you afraid to look to Dick Cotier's right? <laughs> he said, you seemed <laughs> uncomfortable, you know. Or well, actually, his left. Um, and I said, yeah, I was terrified of the camera. And, that's, and I was, because uh, I'd never, you know, it was the first thing I did. And I wasn't experienced. I, I didn't know how to play the camera. Um, I did enjoy working on uh, ENG, which is a Canadian show. Yeah, that you've got a lot of uh, episodes of that. Yeah, I did uh, nine episodes. It says here. Yeah, they didn't want me to. They didn't want me to to read for it because I did. I did another ENG before that. Where I played a bad guy, obviously, because I always play bad guys, which I like. Um, but so they they gave me a chance to you know to to read for it, and uh, I was doing the test. And um, I was sitting in the kitchen with, uh, again, Sarah, Sarah Botsworth, and we're sitting at a table, and I was talking, and I, and I leaned in toward her, and I heard the director, this is Jerry Ciccaridi, Jerry, I hear him yell from the back, cut, 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 oh, God, he cut, comes out. I said, what? Oh, he said, oh, God, no. He said, I said, no what, Jerry? He said, you don't understand. He said, we're on a tight close-up with you. He said, you move that face into a tight close-up, and that face fills the screen. He said, it's scary. <laughs> 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 and, I, and I said, well, he said, no, he said, you, you've got a very intense face. He said, this guy, he's a family guy. He's all smiles. He laughs a lot. Don't lean in. And I didn't. Of course, then I got, of course, I got the part. But... Um, so we did. I, I did those, uh, which I really enjoyed. I, I did a lot of work for uh, Sonny Grosso, okay. who um, who did a lot of work up in Canada with you know Counter Strike, Top Cops, Police File. I mean, he brought a lot of work into uh, into Canada, and uh, which was really nice. And uh, I loved doing the Five Heartbeats with uh, Robert Townsend. It was uh, it was just one scene, mm -hmm. uh, which I liked. It was nice. Uh, but all the other ones, I'm looking. I'm looking down at. Holy, look at all that work. I don't know. I just noticed you had uh, Laura Laura Harrington in a, a couple of your films as well. Do you remember well, much about her? I know the name, but I, I just. She I was can't. in Joy of Sex, but I can't re remember what the other. Let me see. I can't either. I can't okay. either. I remember the name. What about charities? Charities. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite one is the uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, I love that. You know, I, I've given two two cars to them. <laughs> you know, cars I you know want to get rid of. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I think it's I think it's I think it's wonderful. It, they do such great things for kids, and I, you know, I enjoyed that. Um, I know that. What is this? Is that once a five feet eight? I'm not five feet eight inches. Get out of here. <laughs> what the hell? Five Somebody putting eight. some wrong information on there for you? Yeah, somebody's setting somewhere. It's, it's uh, a Eugene Robert Glazer biography. 
Uh, well, at least you got the age right. Thanks a lot, fellas. Five feet eight. <laughs> yeah, I'm a midget. Uh, no. Um, yeah, well. Uh, yeah, what, I got, what can I say? Well, what I'll do is I'm going to, I'll find out, I'll find out when, when I, I think she's coming over tomorrow to look at some clothes. Uh, I'll find out if I have a website. I'm sure I do. I don't know what it is, though. And uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll email you the information on it. Um, so, you know, and the more we update it, uh, you know, it'll have some stuff on it. Um, but so now let me ask you before we go, you know, do you remember, do you remember what your task is? Yeah, give you pictures, uh, send you pictures ah, of the <laughs> cat litter box. Boy, he remembers. I remember. Boy. I can't I, wait. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll uh, do that as soon as I can. Um, yeah, no, there's no rush. There's no rush. Yep. Well, it'll make that easier for you. I'll tell you that. Oh. <laughs> like I said, it takes me less than 20 seconds just to do that. So. Oh, go oh well, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and I, I think I may have seen something like that. I'm not sure, but, you know, just to double check. Yeah, I want to I wanna check that out. That, that'll be... Uh, it might be very, very helpful. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And and if um, you know, if, if if things change, you know, if if we do this short film, um, I'll uh, I'll I'll keep you in touch about it. And, sure. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, listen, Greg. It's been it's it's been a pleasure, and um, it's always nice to be thought of. And. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate the time, and uh, and we'll stay in touch. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate having you on today. Uh, before I let you go, would you mind yeah. doing a plug for my show? All right, great. You <laughs> hey there. <laughs> Sound like a disc jockey now. <laughs> uh, listen, I want all you folks out there to listen to Greg Gilbert of Python's Paradise, C-H-S-R. That's C as in Charlie, H as in Harry, S as in Sugar, R as in Robert, F 